Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, aka WWDC, will officially kick off this coming Monday with its usual keynote. And in this video, we're going to go over some of the things that we expect to see from Apple at WWDC. Now, Apple uses WWDC to preview new versions of iOS, macOS, tvOS, and watchOS, and this year should be no exception. Oftentimes, new hardware such as Refresh Max debut at the event, but this year rumors suggest we're only going to be seeing software from Apple. Starting off with iOS, which will presumably be called iOS 12, we should expect Apple to focus on refined improvements and bug fixes, since it's really no secret that iOS 11 had its fair share of quirks. Apple was initially planning to introduce a range of new features that included a refresh of the home screen with a redesigned app grid, a revamped CarPlay interface, improvements to the core apps like Mail, and new features for the camera and photo applications. But these features have been delayed until 2019, according to Bloomberg, to focus on under-the-hood improvements. Apple does have some changes in store, though. One feature that I'm hoping will still make its way into Monday's announcement is the rumored cross-platform functionality with macOS that will allow developers to create a single app that can work on all devices, like your iPhone, iPad, and Macs. This would definitely boost the number of Mac apps available, as it's also no secret that the Mac App Store is kind of thin in app selection at the moment. Rumors also suggest some new Animojis will hit the iPhone X, and there could be Animoji integration with FaceTime. Another major new feature planned for iOS 12, which will be a focus of the update, includes a suite of new digital health tools that are designed to let users better monitor how much time they spend on their iPhones and iPads, and how much time is spent within the apps. The aim with Apple's new digital tools is to alleviate concerns about smartphone addiction. We should also expect to see an update to ARKit, ARKit 2.0, which will focus on multiplayer gameplay and object persistence, which will allow for virtual objects to remain in place between app sessions. With macOS, as mentioned earlier, we should expect support from cross-platform applications, which could potentially lead to iOS-only apps like Health, Home, and others being available on your Mac. Aside from this possible announcement, there's not much else that we really know about what Apple has planned for macOS, but I'm eager to find out what surprises might be in store. In fact, surprises is kind of the theme at the moment, as we are still unsure about what improvements Apple might have for tvOS 12 and watchOS 5. tvOS and watchOS, especially tvOS, are historically smaller updates than macOS and iOS, and don't receive as much attention, leaving the features largely a surprise. We do know that we are getting a rainbow-themed Pride watch face, but the watch face will be available to everyone following WWDC, rather than bundled into watchOS 5. Finally, even though WWDC is obviously centered around developers and software, sometimes Apple uses the event to launch new hardware, like just last year when it refreshed the MacBooks and iMacs and announced new iPad Pro models. We've heard some analyst predictions and sketchier rumors pointing towards possible product launches at WWDC, but a recent report from Bloomberg suggests Apple will not be introducing any hardware at the event at all, instead focusing solely on software. Even though that report is kind of a major letdown, on the off chance that the report is in fact incorrect, let's go over some hardware that we could possibly see at WWDC. Apple sometimes refreshes Macs during the summer, and some models that could receive updates would be the 12-inch MacBook and the MacBook Pros with next-generation Intel chips, but more than likely we won't see this until later this year. The same goes for a rumored low-cost notebook that will serve as a successor to the MacBook Air. It's not ready for a summer launch. The iPad Pro is also due for an upgrade and is one that I'm personally looking forward to the most because rumors suggest that it will have reduced bezels and a true depth camera system for Face ID, but reports are also saying that this won't happen at WWDC with a September launch more likely. Another product that has been highly rumored and talked about is the follow-up to Apple's budget iPhone SE, which has been the subject of some wild speculation. We've heard rumors suggesting everything from small design changes to a glass back, to a major overhaul that includes Face ID camera system and an iPhone X style design, something that seems unlikely for a device that Apple has positioned as its most affordable. Some rumors have said that the iPhone SE 2 could come at WWDC, but we've heard nothing reliable. Analyst Gene Munster says Apple plans to introduce a cheaper Beats-branded HomePod-like speaker that would include Siri integration, but that's also a little bit outlandish. Finally, WWDC could see the launch of some things that we definitely know exist, because Apple announced them last year, the AirPower and the wireless AirPods charging case. The AirPower lets your iPhone, Apple Watch, and AirPods, with the inclusion of the new AirPod case, charge at the same time wirelessly. 
Apple announced it back in September, and then there's been no sign of it since then. I'm not sure why Apple is keeping these items in the dark, but WWDC would be a perfect place to announce when consumers could purchase one. What are you hoping to see announced at WWDC? Of course, be sure to let us know in the comments down below and stay locked into MacRumors.com for all of the latest news going forward. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.